folks are coming in and joining us. Thank you all for being here. I'm just, I'm, I feel really honored that you've all come to my house this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, do some things with a burial shroud. So that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm Nicola Finch. Um, my husband and I live out here on 48 acres um, on the Chilcotin Plateau in, in British Columbia. And uh, we've been here about 20 years now. Um, we steward the land, meaning we really try and just look after it um, and do as little as possible to the land. Um, we are on unceded traditional territory of the Chilcotin. And we actually do, we do find evidence of them living here. I mean, we know they did anyway, lived and traveled through the area, but we do find evidence here. And um, we also both feel the spirits of the people walking this land. And so it's a um, pretty powerful place to live. Um, we have, uh, we support ourselves uh, making wood rings, as I was just mentioning, touch wood rings. And we've also done that for about 20 years. Um, and so this work is my passion, the death caring work. I did train as a death doula, um, but I don't really identify as a death doula. I identify more as a, a community death caring advocate and a natural burial advocate. Um, again, on our 48 acres here, David and I are, and, and the nonprofit that we founded, are working on taking 10 acres of this property and turning it into a natural burial ground. So that's kind of exciting news that we, we just had a board meeting about a week ago and decided that that's what we're going to go ahead with as far as a natural burial ground. So wish us luck. <laughs> Teresa is here. She's on our board. Um, and... Uh, so that's quickly about me. What I would like to do, and I know we only have two hours, but I would really love to go around the group and have everyone as briefly as possible introduce yourselves by name, um, where you call home, and what brought you here today. And if we can keep that fairly brief, then we can get into the meat of the matter. But I do want to hear from everyone. I really, when we have these Zoom meetings and... Um, and we don't do that, it feels like a, a lack to me that we don't have that contact with each other. And since we're going to be talking about honoring our grief and about making burial shrouds, I think it's really important that we all touch with each other. So how about I just go around the screen and pick on people as you show up for me, and then we know we have everyone, okay? Um, so we'll start with Sherry Burns. You're in my top, top box. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear me. Okay. Okay, good. Um, Sherry Burns. I live right outside of um, Kansas City. Um, that's right in the dead center of the United States. Um, I recently completed my uh, doula education and I'm trying to get my website up and running. Um, I also volunteer with um, a local hospice and have undergone special training to do like part of the No One Dies Alone program. Um, so my reason for taking the class is just so that I have more tools and knowledge and insight to share with my clients and help them find um, creative ways of, of handling their, the end of their life and how they want um, mm -hmm. to be taken care of afterwards. Great. Thanks, Sherry. Welcome. And Karen Anderson. Andreason, I think. Andreason. Um so I live in New Westminster, BC, for those who are not in Canada. Um, it was the original capital of British Columbia many, many moons ago. And I am just getting into end of life care. Um, I just took a course through Douglas College at the end of September, and we did a brief unit on natural burial and a lady that I have previously worked with, Emily Boodle, came in and spoke to us. And through that, I ended up finding an online course that very same day about natural burial that Nicola was putting on. And when you mentioned this shroud workshop, it is something that I am very interested in for myself. My mom's a seamstress, so 
as soon as I discovered this, I sent her a message saying, okay, weird question time. Will you make a burial shroud for me? And she said, yes. So she's going to make it and I'm going to decorate it. And yeah, that's pretty much why I'm here. I'd also love to learn so I can pass this on to other people as I get my business started. I'll be able to possibly not necessarily lead people in making their own, but at least guide them in this Great. direction if anyone would like to. Thank you, Karen. Welcome. Lexi, I have you next up. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Sure can. Okay. Um, one of my speakers doesn't work in my headphones, so it's a little awkward. Um, I'm in Toronto GTA. And I am a counselor on the dining room spouses. I'm not sure who said that. That was it's okay. That's just someone who's not muted yet. Okay. Um, I'm a counselor and a death doula in Toronto GTA. Um, my work primarily focuses with pe um, for people with alternative religions and atheistic religions um, looking for end of life care. I guess that's the short and sweet of me. Great, thank you. Welcome. And Allison. Can you unmute your There you go. Hi. Yeah, there we are. I was pushing the wrong button. <laughs> okay, so I'm Allison. Hello, I'm from Down Under. I'm in Australia, in Victoria, and uh, I have just started my um, end of life care uh, doula um, studying. I've been a celebrant here, marriage and funeral celebrant for the last 16 years. So I'm just trying to add this to my, you know, repertoire. And um, so I'm just here today. Thank you very much for having me. Um, and it's at a reasonable time. It's 8.30 here in the morning. So, um, so yeah, want to learn whatever I can about end of life care and and so I can offer options to my um, families that I'd be working with. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Welcome, Alison. Okay, I'm still admitting a couple of people here. And Teresa Jones. Hi everyone, um, I'm Teresa. I am fairly nearby um, to where Nicola is. Uh, my home is in Quinell. Um, my, I have a strong interest in um, all many forms of alternative disposition end of life care um, and so on. Um, I had the, the honor and sadness of shrouding and burying my closest friend um, in 2014. Um, and so I certainly, I, I, yeah, I think shrouds are beautiful, happy to be here and be part of a group learning more. And um, yeah, thank you, Nicola. Thanks, Teresa, welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Lorraine. Oh, hi, uh, I'm Lorraine Holtzlander. I'm in Saskatoon. And uh, I've been a nurse for a long time. I've done a lot of palliative care in the community and um, I teach at the university and do some research. And so I'm just uh, learning more about uh, death doula and sort of alternatives that we can offer people. So very much uh, appreciate have you having me here. Thank you, welcome. Helen, you're up. Not paying attention. Um, hi, I'm Helen and I'm in Northwestern Ontario, uh, Canada. And uh, I did my death doula training with Douglas College as well in um, January. So I am just in the process of learning uh, how to help out my clients and stuff around here. 
And yeah, and the shroud is very interesting to me. And today I'm going to be working on one for my puppy who may not make the winter. So. Thank you. That's my goal. Thank you. Yes, shrouding our pets is a beautiful thing to do. Yeah, thanks, Ellen. And Julia, iPad 69. <laughs> I do apologize for not being able to get rid of that iPad 69. Um, and I didn't even choose it as a name. I'm uh, in England and it's getting incredibly late at night. So I may not stay the whole course. I apologize in advance. Um, I had to face up to um, what seemed very real possibility of my own death six months ago because I got COVID very badly and was on a ventilator. Hence still husky voice. but. But what I really want to get from this is I've, I've been trying to sum up uh, what I would want to be remembered for had uh -huh. I died, which I didn't do. And so that's really the aspect, whether I get round to making a shroud or not, it's how would I like to be remembered. Right. Thank you. And we're really glad you're still here with us. Thanks, Julia. Ellen, I've got you up now. Hi, I'm also from England, from West Yorkshire. Hi. Um, so I, I got into the Coffin Club, which is big in the UK now. And um, I'm looking at the alternative, the eco-friendly options, and uh, looking at soul, midwif midwif soul midwifery. So I'm really glad that you've allowed me to this workshop. So thank you very much. Thank and hello you. to you guys. Yeah, welcome. I've got Russell's iPhone here. Do we have a picture, Russell? Uh, it's Joy here, and I can't seem to get the uh, camera working at the moment, but I'm from Australia, and I'm really grateful to be doing the workshop, and I'd like to be shrouded when I die, and I'd like to learn a lot more about it for my work with others. Thank Great. you. Thanks. Welcome, Joy. I'm glad you got in. Brenda. Hi. Hi. I'm currently staying with a friend <clears throat> who lives in Elmont, Ontario, just outside of Ottawa. And next week I'm moving to Halifax. I just finished an end of life um, online program with University of Vermont. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I'm also very interested in natural burial. Years ago, I used to think about crocheting my own shroud. Uh -huh. But this year, I'm much more interested in hand stitching. And when I saw that N Nicola was going to personalize her own shroud, I got quite excited. And so I'm very interested to be here and see what ideas everybody has. Thank you very much for having this workshop. Great. Thank you. And welcome. And Lee. Lee last. You're, un you're still muted. Her sound isn't working, she said in the oh, chat. Sorry. She's from Cape Town, South Africa. <laughs> Hi, Lee and I have conversed a fair amount. Welcome, Lee. Glad you're here. You can hear us all right, though, eh? Okay, great. Thank you. Christine? Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm um, Christine. And I live um, in the Rockland community in Ontario. That's just a little bit east of Ottawa. And um, I'm a total newbie. And um, I saw a documentary years ago. I used to live in Quebec. It's a French documentary from Quebec. And it was all about, we're not going to die talking about it. And it was trying to open up this whole subject. And uh, something in that movie always stayed with me. And it was about a ritual of cleansing and taking care of a body of a loved one and shrouding them and everything. And I was completely fascinated by that. So when I saw your workshop, something just said, just go and learn more about it because I'm really interested in the natural burial process. I, I want to live a more authentic death. You know, I want my, my, my passing to look like me. Yes. And the traditional way doesn't. So 
that's what I'm, I'm looking for inspiration and more information. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Kim. Kim Lyons. Hi, everybody. I'm Kim. And um, I'm coming from Victoria, uh, unceded territory um, of the Saanich peoples. Um, I'm a death doula and soon to be funeral celebrant. And um, I really want to work with people who have lost their pets. And so I'm here for creativity, inspiration, networking. And uh, Nicola, I've seen you in a few webinars and I just love your disposition and so support everything that you're working towards. So this is really beautiful to be a part of. Thank you. Welcome. Jane, we have you up next. Hi, I'm Jane, and I did my end of life doula training last November. And Karen, I live in North Delta, so I'm like 10 minute drive from you. So, um, and I'm, I'm just very interested. I, I really enjoyed your talk at the Deaf Doula Network, Nicola. Thank you. Um, so, I, I, I'm just, want to see what it's all about and just you know yeah have to give people options as well when I do get my business going great so. thank you and welcome here Deb we have you up next hi hi how are you I'm sorry I had to step out um I, I just uh, recently completed the end of life program with the University of Vermont also. Um, and I never, I'm, I was raised traditional Catholic, but for the last six years I've been doing um, psycho, psych, psychic and spiritual development classes. And then with um, this class, it kind of opened my mind to natural burial and as others have expressed before, you know, what really fits fits me as a person versus traditional. Yeah. Um, my yeah. mom is 99 and uh, she just had a stroke this past Monday. Um, so she's uh, on morphine right now every four hours and uh, it, it just doesn't look good. So now I'm trying to think, well, maybe I can make not a full shroud, but something yeah. um, meaningful yeah. to her um, because she was very, mm -hmm. um, I'd say like, ornate um as far as you know liking the gold and the silver and the sparkly jewelry and things like that so um I, i'm very excited um to see what you present today so thank you so much great thanks deb yeah melanie knight welcome we need you to unmute thank you. thanks so. i got you got me um, I am on the unceded land of the Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation here in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I am an artist in residence of a few palliative care wards and I make legacy art with the people in their final transition. Wonderful. I'm also an art therapist. Um, and so I do have a various populations around grief and trauma uh, and things, but I do believe that um, creativity and uh, somatic experiencing um, is really important. And for me, that comes out through art and textile and things like that. And I'd like to push what I do to um, shrouds as a, as a part of the grief process. Wonderful, thank you. Welcome. Paula Marie. Hi. Hi there. Um, I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I'm a celebrant here. Um, I've done ceremony for many, many years, but um, formally trained recently, <laughs> like in the past 10. So um, what I'm here for, what I'm interested in is I do ceremony throughout the dying process and at various thresholds of um, things. And what I'm very interested in is pretty much what the last person was talking about was um, that creative expression in um, during times of illness or during times of grief. 
uh, I think it's very healing. I think um, we need to do more of it. And creating a shroud as a group effort um, when people are so stressed as to what to do, what can we do? Um, I think it would be a beautiful project. And, um, you know, it is becoming more and more available to people to do um, uh, natural burials. So um, mm -hmm. that's why I'm here. That's why I'm interested in. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Madeline. Maddie Christie. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, I, I live uh, on Vancouver Island on the unceded Comox Nation territory. Um, I also took the Douglas College End of Life doula program back in April. Um, I refer to myself currently as a death companion um, end of life doula. Um, like Kim, I also kind of work with uh, pet death. Um, I am the host of the Wake um, Swan Song uh, Swan Song Challenge, if you've seen it on the schedule. Um, and I'm also a passionate green burial um, home funeral advocate. And that's kind of also why I'm here. And Nicola is amazing. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So glad you're here. Maddie's also one of the organizers of the overarching Swan Song Festival, which this workshop is a part of. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Thank you. Krista Brenner. Hello. Well, so I started my journey a few years ago um, and I really wanted to become a funeral director, but my allergy to formaldehyde really forced the natural aspect of death for me. And so I'm now um, a death doula, practicing death doula, as well as a funeral celebrant. And I think the bulk of my experience that I have right now is I work as an energy healer. So I do Reiki and a few other different modalities. And I have a lot of um, widows that come and see me that is the the bulk of I guess who I'm working with and I really want to focus a lot of my um, learning a lot of my education currently I'm studying for a funeral pre-planner and I want to focus everything I possibly can on green is my my end goal excellent thank you welcome thank you you're up Hi everyone, I'm Suzanne. I'm in Southern Ontario in the Toronto GTA area. I too have recently completed some end of life doula training. I did a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with Olga, who I'm sure a lot of you know from Douglas College and other places. And I seem to just keep coming back to eco burials and everything about eco burials. I would love to purchase some forest and build one here in Ontario. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also someone who in a, in a previous life uh, designed a lot of clothes. So getting back to designing funeral shrouds and working with people and helping them do their own is a natural fit. So super excited to be here. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Jennifer and David. Hi. we need there you are <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> figuring out the technology yeah. hi everyone it's really lovely to be here um i'm jennifer and um, my husband david and i live um just outside of madison wisconsin in a suburb that's got a little more of the country i mean it um it's not right in the city but maybe 15 minutes out and um like deb and brenda i just completed the um, university of vermont end of life doula program and now I'm actually um, working on another program that seemed to complement that one called Doula Givers International. Yeah. I'm a registered nurse by, by trade, but I've been out of that loop for a while. And um, some, some of you have mentioned um, companion animal um, end of life doula work. And I just learned that our phenomenal instructor from University of Vermont teaches a class on that. Um, oh. That's slated to start in February. And I'm thinking of adding that to my repertoire. And I guess what, what led me here besides, I think it was Brenda, um, you passed on the information to us. So thank you so much. Um, I read, I stumbled upon, it's funny how when you find your, your calling, 
um, these doors start to open for opportunities. And I came across um, Lucinda Herring's book, Reimagining Death, that talks about um, natural burial and home funeral services. And David and I always thought that we would be cremated. But when we heard about, when I read about that, um, and then we learned that there's a nearby um, green burial, uh, natural burial um, location called um, Natural Path, natural, yep, natural Path, natural path Sanctuary, um, that just really resonated with us and made so much sense. So um, yeah, and then also along with Deb, uh, Deb introduced me to a spiritual and psychic development um, class that is fantastic, um, along with some shamanic studies offerings. And I'm feeling really called to kind of add those to my repertoire too. So just well, a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, thank you and welcome both of you. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for hosting and, and here's David. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just interested in the natural burial part and uh, kind of along for the ride, I guess. <laughs> I was gonna say, I've kind of recruited him first. <laughs> That's pretty much like my husband, David, too. He's along for the ride, but he's right in there. <laughs> yep, those Davids are good guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Carolyn. Carolyn Vaughn. I've got... Have you got an unmute? I've got something here from you, but I can't... And it. Yeah, okay, there you go. And it. Hi to everybody. Hi, Kim. Um, I call New South Wales in Australia home. So um, I managed to ditch the bed head, but I've got the coffee. So <laughs> it's 8.30 here in the morning. Really good time. <laughs> I came to this work. I've been a, um, a wedding and a funeral celebrant for 15 years. And for the last couple of years, I had the, the great honour of nursing my parents um, several close friends, people we've lost in fires with the bushfires here in January through their death. And, um, and I didn't even realise at the time that I was actually doulering. So I, in the middle of all of that, had trained with the most wonderful woman in Melbourne, Helen Callanan, who uh, trains preparing doulas for um, end-of-life doula training. Um, her website was... Uh, she. How come I'm stumbling? It's really interesting. This just listening to everybody talk this morning has been the most profound process for me because I wasn't quite sure why I came to the process, but now I've right. got it. Yeah. Um, I recently buried my girlfriend and we had the I had the honor of working with her husband in that burial process of walking him through the bathing and the dressing and and it was the most beautiful honored thing to be able to do and this is another thing that for me will allow people to move through that grief process that Melanie was talking about Melanie Knight um, being able to materialize all of those thoughts and all of that I don't want to put a name on it into yeah. the shrouding process um, my little girl came up with her own way of doing that because of COVID she made herself a huge paper hug mm -hmm. to wrap around my girl. She decorated that. So that was her way of shrouding. So I'm really interested to hear and see and just absorb lots of information to be able to share that with other people. Great. Thank you, Carolyn. Ari, I have you up next here. Hey, um, I'm from Australia too. I'm in the south of Victoria. Um, not in Melbourne, but out rural. Um, I came across this workshop link through, like Carolyn, um, Helen Callanan's Facebook group for um, people who have done her um, end of life doula training. Um, yeah, I just, I think I'm in a stage in my life where I'm trying to learn as much as I can about everything that is taking my interest currently. So I've, you know, I've just done the end of life doula training and then I saw this and I'm an artist. I've studied fine art before this. And yeah, I'm kind of, I'm at a point where I'm just trying to find the best way to express all of the skills that I have and the um, drive for being 
a healer, a carer um, in the right way. So yeah, I'm just learning and exploring. And this sounded like a really interesting and beautiful workshop to do. Great, thank you, welcome. How are we doing for getting through? Who have I missed? Let me see, uh, Sue? Sue caught? Asked, I need you to unmute there. Z-E-T, is that Sue? Yes. It is, I had a problem logging in one way. That's okay. <laughs> so, okay. Glad to uh, see you. I live, yeah. I live and work in North Carolina and I'm very interested in conservation and green burial. Um, and I'm a, a wannabe death doula. It was only recently that I discovered that there's this thing we're calling, or many people are calling a death positive movement. And so doing some research, um, you know, being on Instagram, I found uh, your, your page and doing a shroud is, is something very interesting to me. So I thought I would join this workshop today and make one for one of my cats. Great, so thank I'm you. And do a uh, natural burial for my cat. Wonderful, thank you. Got Joe, Joe Douglas, Douglas. Hello, yes, Hello. Douglas. Yeah, well done. Got it the first time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in England. Um, uh, I'm an artist um, and a firm believer in uh, green burial and home funerals. Um, I'm currently running a series of conversations on life and death. I'm just exploring with many different diverse groups of people what that means to them. So um, I thought this would be a, a great opportunity to, to look deeper into, into this particular aspect. And personal reasons too, I think it's a beautiful idea. I'd like to be able to design something for myself. Great, thank you, welcome. So my screen is popping around because people come and go. Um, who, <clears throat> who have I missed? Because I've gone, we've gone out of order now, so I'm not sure who I haven't called upon. Is anyone? Have I missed anyone? Hi, Teresa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I'd unmute myself. And uh, yeah, so I'm Teresa Melody, and I'm from Port Macquarie in New South Wales, Australia, traditional land of the Biripai people. Um, so I did my training through Helen Cullinan. And I also did uh, with her preparing the way and um, also with Zenith Virago, um, who the death walker. Right. So I've been very honored to have trained underneath both those ladies. I guess I'm still exploring as to where I, I want to sit, but um, I feel a need for a desire or a calling to uh, look into the sacredness of death and provide a sacred space right from beginning to the moment we fold them up. And uh, to be honest, I can't sew to save myself. <laughs> so whatever shrouds I come up with are going to be very rustic, but um, made with love. And, um, and I'll, it's just an exploration too, to see how far I can go with this as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. Welcome. We just had Gail join us and I think, uh, Gail, would you mind introducing yourself, where you're from and a quick introduction about what brought you here today? Thank you and I'm sorry I'm late. I had right. uh, numerable uh, challenges uh, technically. I, um, I live in Montreal. I am presently north of Montreal in the Laurentian Mountains though, but I am a Montrealer. And um, I um, have had a lot of experience working in palliative care and in doing end of life work with both individuals and their families. I am a homeopathic practitioner as well and have done a lot of study of homeopathic remedies in end of life care. Um, I have accompanied people as they are um, transitioning and I have for the longest time wanted to make a shroud 
and prepare shrouds both for um, the people I love and maybe myself too. Yeah, great, thank you. Have I missed anyone? All right, thank you all so much. Again, I'm just honored that you're all here um, and interested in the, the whole process of shroud making and honoring our grief. And I know some people here are in the midst of it and, and none of us are immune to grief. Um, and sort of this is, this is what it's all about for me. It's about honoring our grief. Um, I have um, personally, I'll just give you, I'm just gonna change the view here. I wanna see people if I may. And I would ask you to mute yourselves if you're not speaking. Um, and feel free to take your camera off, although it's absolutely wonderful to see your faces and to have everyone here. So, <laughs> but whatever you like. And also please take care of yourself during this workshop. If you need to get up and go and get a glass of water or pop off to the bathroom, do that, okay? Don't feel stuck in front of your screen. Uh, get up and stretch if you want to. So while I'm talking here, I'm going to <clears throat> start showing you some, some things that I've been working on. The reason I bought a burial shroud is for, for years I've wanted to make myself one. Someone just mentioned they're not much of a seamstress. I probably could sew a shroud, but I wasn't that interested in spending that amount of time figuring out the pattern and actually sewing my own. And so I purchased one and it was about $280 Canadian, which I thought was pretty darn good. That's not, you know, if you, if you consider buying um, a DIY coffin kit or making your own pine box it's going to cost you more than a burial shroud and one of the reasons I really like a burial shroud for a natural burial is because it's a pretty inexpensive option and anybody can do it, it you know it doesn't need to be a purchased burial shroud it can be whatever you like really and so um, last year at the at the swan song festival I uh just trying, just need to do a little bit of changing. Tell me if you can't see what I'm doing, okay? Because I'm stepping back a little bit. So last year for the Swan Song Festival in Williams Lake, we actually, um, we had a, a communal ancestral shroud is what we called it. And what we did was we took this very large piece of canvas, which is big enough for a burial shroud. and. We painted just the basics of a, <clears throat> of a tree on it. And then people who came to the Swan Song Festival, it was a public event, added leaves and names and pictures to the burial shroud. And so it was basically a communal ancestral burial shroud. And I think it's something that could also be done for, um, for families where you have a basic large enough piece of canvas, cotton, um, whatever material, natural material works for you and to set it up for families to decorate. And so that's just a, an example of, of one thing that's pretty easy to do. Um, all I did to prepare it was hem the edges. The cotton canvas is not terribly expensive. If I were to be wrapped in this, I would want it to be softer. This is a pretty heavy duty um, cotton canvas. Um, so it would make a good sturdy burial shroud, but there's no, there's no ties on it. And so it'd be a matter of um, <clears throat> tying it up with what you have on hand or making ties for it. So that's a real basic deal there. Um, again, burial shrouds. This, something like this would make a beautiful, easy burial shroud. This is a, a lovely old linen tablecloth and it's very large. It's for a big table and it comes from David's mom from my mother-in-law and she had a big bag of these from her earlier years and so when she said oh nobody wants these I said well I sure do. <laughs> so I lucked out and got a large bag of beautiful linen tablecloths and so something like this would be really fun to um, embellish because it's such beautiful material it's quite light and so again it's not something you would carry somebody in but we'll talk more about that in a minute but it's certainly something that you could embellish quite beautifully 
Um, and it could be something that the family might embellish too. So that's, you know, something like that is, is an option for a burial shroud. Really a burial shroud is just a winding cloth. It's a sheet. It can be a bed sheet. Um, you could buy a really, really fancy, really nice um, bed sheet and, and use that as a burial shroud. So it doesn't have to be something fancy. Then this guy here is one of my old, <laughs> old bed sheets. It's a, one of my favorites. It's flannel and it's nice and heavy, but it's pretty much worn out for using on our bed. And so what I'm going to do is tuck this in my burial shroud box because I would like to be wrapped in this first, in this beautiful flannel, and then wrapped in my burial shroud. So that's, that's an option too, you know, to taking um, a favorite old uh, cloth or um, a bed cover and using that as the basics of your burial shroud. So, and when I, when I do this, I'm reminded that one of the most important things to me is hanging whatever cloth you're using outside on the clothesline. If you don't have, if you're not lucky enough to have um, a big, you know, a yard with a clothesline, then hang it on your balcony, um, hang it outside so that it smells fresh. There's nothing like cloth that smells like outside to me anyway. That's kind of my, so when I take my clothes off the line, I can often be seen like this with my face buried and things as I'm taking them down. Because <laughs> I love this smell. So that's, uh, and so I'm not using just a plain cloth, although like I say, I will, I will use that, um, that lovely flannel sheet to be initially wrapped in. I don't want to be dressed. These are things we need to address for ourselves and to either let the people we love know about it and write it down so that people aren't guessing what you want. Um, I've been pretty rabid about writing down my own wishes. About a year and a half ago, um, I had an open heart surgery and it came up really fast. It was an enlarged aortic aneurysm, um, pretty much a shock to me, my husband and my, my family. Um, and it's one of those things that uh, I was really fortunate that my doctor caught it because it's the kind of thing you can drop dead from. Fortunately, I didn't. But I, and I also had time to, like Julia, I think it was, really consider my own imminent death. And, and I certainly, um, it was kind of 50-50 when I went on the operating table. I was pretty sure I wasn't going to make it. Um, I did. But I'm really glad I had that opportunity because... It allowed me to do that deep dive into what it means for us to die. Uh, it's a very different thing when you're um, when you're thinking about someone else you love who's dying, or when you're thinking about your own self. Um, and what I'm really rabid about is making it as easy as possible on the people we love when we die, so that if I do drop dead. I've left as much in place as I can, and I've left love. And, and I really feel all this shroud making boils down to love, whether we're making it, making the shroud for ourselves, or we're making it for someone we love or an animal we love. Um, it's really about sharing the love. And, I, and it's about um, making my own shroud is, is a way for me to, um, let the people I know, know that I love them and thank them. And it's also a way for me to take a little bit of their spirit with me wherever I happen to go, um, whether it's into dust or, or into spirit world, I don't know. But um, I want to take some of their love with me, whether, you know, whether I go to the fire or go into the ground. Um, I would choose natural burial, but I'm also not dead as set against cremation. Um, all my beloveds have been cremated. And so I have bits of their bones and ashes and I like that. I'm not gonna get into the politics of cremation versus natural burial. Um, 
So this is, when I ordered my burial shroud, this is how it came in this lovely plain cardboard box, which I'm keeping because it now contains um, my will and my mass care plan and all those documents. And so really it's my, my dead box, right? Be ready, be prepared. <clears throat> So this is how the burial shroud arrived, although it, it's looking a little gnarly right now because I've had it out and worked on it. So before we get into it, there's my, my documents safely in this box. And I'm coming back to the screen for a sec. Um, You're muted, Nicola. Nicola, you're muted. What, you can't guess what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. So what I was saying is, if you have something to share, um, please put your mic on and speak up because I'm not keeping an eye on the chat while I'm, while I'm talking back here, okay? Uh, if you can't see what I'm doing or you've missed something, let me know. Um, I will certainly look at the notes later, but I can't, um, I can't be with that right now. And thank you, Madeline, for looking after those, those notes at the side. I appreciate it. Okay. So the burial shroud. I'm really pleased I bought this because while I say you can use just a, a blanket or a cloth, I'm really delighted to have this actual shroud to work on and embellish. And so it's, which is the top? That's the, there's the feet, right? That's got a kind of a, a narrower bottom to it. And then the top has this wider place for the shoulders, right? And it's, while they call it a basic shroud, and yes, it was Evergreen Coffin Company in Royston on Vancouver Island where I purchased this, um, Rita Then, Sita uh, Fenn is the woman that I talked to there. Um, this is quite a neat shroud because it's, it wraps you right up. So it opens. And so my body, the body lies here. And the back is actually um, a heavier cotton canvas than the sides are, which is really nice. It feels good. Like I wouldn't mind wrapping myself in that. It feels nice, but I would still want the, the flannel just because I'm, I love flannel. So this is sewed inside here so that you're tucked right into it. And it has inside ties and outside ties. So it's fairly simple to get a body into. Um, you go right into the ties and then once the body's in there, then you pull the tops the top over, and it has another set of ties, right? So you can tuck somebody right in there. Um, that looks a fair amount bigger than I am, which is fine because I want an interior um, sheet anyway, and maybe I'll be a lot bigger when I die. I don't know, um, but you can still. You know, you can wrap these fairly tight and you can add other wraps if you want. So this, this particular shroud, and I don't know how much you know about shrouds, but they, this one doesn't have a piece of cloth down the back where you insert a backboard. And I wouldn't ask anybody to carry me in this shroud. It's probably not sturdy enough and, um, bodies are difficult to move, um, plain and simple. And so you really do want some kind of a backboard or a carrying tray. Um, the, in British Columbia, there are um, funeral companies that will rent a, a wicker, what do you call it? A wicker uh, tray basically that you put the, the shrouded body on. You can also make your own and um, you can use this guy back here, which is 
quite heavy and it's called the basic cremation tray. So it's really, I don't know if you can see it from there. It's not very wide. It's really heavy, um, but it's sturdy too, and there's no leak to it, right? So if you're dealing with a funeral home or a cemetery that insists that you have a leak-proof container for the movement of the body, this is a really good way to go. It's also quite inexpensive. It's about $200, and it's just called a basic cremation tray. So the top, when you order a basic cremation tray, and, and most um, funeral service professionals aren't that keen on, you won't often see them on a website, although the more progressive funeral providers do offer them. Um, they're the very basic deal, right? And so this comes folded up and tucked into that basic cremation tray, and it's just a lid. And again, very often, and usually, if you're uh, transporting a body, say if my husband was transporting me in a vehicle, um, even to a natural burial ground, it's, um, it's law that the body be covered, that you can't see, and so this wouldn't suffice, the actual shroud, but this would, and this just places over top of this guy here. Okay. Pop it in there. Anyway, I won't pop it in, but you get the general idea. Also, that basic cremation tray is really um, handy for uh, home funerals, family-directed funerals, because you can place that kind of a tray. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a wicker one, great, because they're beautiful, but this also works, and you can paint it. The family can decorate it. They can also decorate the cardboard cover, um, which is another really lovely thing for a family to do, um, family or, or your loved ones to decorate as a process of grieving. And so, yeah, so then that cremation tray can go on a table or wherever your loved one is laid out at home. And then the, the shroud, you know, you can put flowers or boughs underneath or um, something softer, um, you know, you can make it as beautiful as you like. And so that's a really good basic way to go. This is a good basic shroud. Um, <laughs> so when my, when my shroud arrived in this cardboard box, it was a very odd thing. Uh, it took me days to open it. And I am not, I'm not one for delayed gratification, quite the opposite actually. <laughs> But with this burial shroud, it sat on my table for days before I opened it. A nice sunny day came, I guess it was in, I think it was in July that it arrived. Um, and I finally opened it. And it was quite a, quite an emotional experience to actually see my final piece of clothing. Um, Pia Interlandi calls it the garment for the grave, which I really love. Um, and so then I took it outside and put it on the grass unfolded it, opened it up. I actually haven't laid in it yet, which will be another experience. Um, but I have started to decorate it and to personalize it, which has been interesting too. Um, just to back up a little bit, my, my brother, um, my kind of my, my munch scream moment was when my brother took his own life when he was 29 years old and I was 25 and that was my real introduction to death, um, person, you know, personally speaking. Um, my family was awesome. They, they did a very um, personal funeral for him. My dad built the pine box for his firstborn and only son. And we wrote the, the service and we, we looked after him. We cleaned up his apartment where he had killed himself um, it was a real awakening for me. Um, after this many years, I, I look upon my brother's death as a bit of a gift, actually largely a gift, because I've learned so much from that. Um, my mom lived another eight years. She died when she was 58 years old. She died, um, she was ill for a long time, and she died in hospital, and then we took her home for a week, which was another marvelous experience. And that was my first experience with um, 
the idea of a, a shroud or making our own um, making our own cotton cloth things to go with our beloved. I have a, a cousin who's a <clears throat> who's a fabric artist, and she made an absolutely beautiful full length cotton gown for my mom to be cremated in. Um, after we had the wake at home, which I guess was about 24 hours, I don't really remember, it might have been a couple of days, it's hard, the, those experiences are difficult time-wise to know what, what really went on. But when, when we were finished with our wake, um, she and my dad lived in Penticton at the time, and she wanted to be cremated in the same place that her son was cremated in Vancouver. And so she was transported um, by the coroner down to Vancouver and I insisted on going with her. Um, and so I traveled in the coroner's vehicle with my mom in the back. And while we made that journey, I sewed um, a pillow slip for her, for her pillow, for her cremation. And that was kind of my first experience with mini shroud making. And it was, um, it was a really wonderful thing to do. I don't think the coroner and I said more than four words to each other that whole trip. He was lovely and kind. Um, and I was so grateful to have something to work on that was going to go with my mom. Um, it, it um, again, it was a really enriching experience. Um, and then my dad died too young again. These guys all died too young, as far as I'm concerned, although, you know, that's a is there anything too young? Um, too young for my liking. So <clears throat> my dad died when he was, I think, 78. And he was on dialysis. Uh, he discontinued his dialysis, decided to come home and die at home. And that was amazing. Um, my sisters and our husbands were all with him when he died um, during the dying process. And we washed him and tended to him when he died. Um, we put his little dog on the bed with him. And the little dog just stuck the whole time. Um, and my dad was also cremated. Um, one of the reasons that this work is so important to me is that I'm super keen on people knowing what they can do. You know, when it's your when it's your first death, when it's when it hits you and you don't know what to do, that's that's what I that's what my work is about is um, community death caring, having a community that can hold you and say, no, you can do this as much as you want to do, right? Um, you don't, we don't have to hand our beloveds off to um, industry and professionals. And I'm not saying, you know, there's not a whole lot of lovely people out there, but um, I'm pretty passionate about reclaiming death as an honored part of life. And uh, so, yeah, that's a little bit of um, where my history and, and where my passion comes from with this work. So when I, <laughs> and so <laughs> this decorating a burial shroud or personalizing a burial shroud was also very interesting for me because I'm the kind of person, like I have this beautiful, I have this beautiful book called The Unwinding, right? And it is an incredibly lovely illustrated notebook. I'm a notebook junkie. I haven't made a mark in this book yet. And I have a lot of notebooks that I haven't made marks in. And so making a mark on this burial shroud was a real push for me. I decided right before I started that anything I put on my shroud, I would not take off. And so I started to sew. <laughs> I got out my embroidery cotton and I started to sew these you see these little bright stars here? They're all, they're blue and red and gold and, and yellow. And, um, and I just laughed at myself because those are not my colors. I'm a dark person. I like browns and blacks and dark blue. And as it turns out, what I started out with on this burial shroud is beautiful, bright little stars. And I just, the next morning I got up and I just giggled. It really delighted me. And so that's when I, you know, I decided, yeah, no, I'm not taking anything off this, off this burial shroud. And so I haven't got very far on actually 
putting things on my shroud or actually, but I have, I did this, this lovely little line all the way down the edge and boy, it takes time. And one of the things too, about having a, a burial shroud that's this big and this heavy is it's a lot to have on your lap and work with. And so what I started doing was making pieces that I'll add to the shroud. I will do more of this because I really enjoyed it, this actual embroidery on the shroud. So I will do more of that, but I've also started making pieces that I'll add to it. Um, just because it's, it's easier when I'm sitting in my comfy chair at night to, to work on a smaller piece with an embroidery hoop. Um, and so also what, I, what I've started here down the, down the edge, and I think I mentioned in the notes too that you might wanna think about poems or um, sayings that mean something to you. I'm just gonna grab something and I'll be right back and show you. This is, um, this is the front of a, um, a window box, a, a flower window box that my dad made for me when I had my first house with a garden. It was a rented house, but it was my first place with a garden. And I was so excited about growing herbs. And so he did this flower box for me that was full of hyacinths. And the, the verse, if you don't know, it's from the old Persian. It's if of thy mortal goods thou art bereft, and from thy slender store two loaves are left, sell one, and with the dole, buy hyacinths to feed thy soul. And I love it. And I love my dad. And so this hangs on my kitchen wall now. The flower box is long gone, but the front is a treasure to me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of having this buried with me or or burnt in a cremation, but I can write it on my burial shroud. So that's what I've done here along this, this edge. And I've done it in um, uh, fabric, fabric pen initially. So I've got the verse all written out along this edge and my plan is to embroider it. So that's gonna take some time, but it's also, it's also about love, right? And so I don't mind taking the time to do something in a very slow, thoughtful way. As I, as I add people and memories to my shroud, I'm thinking about them and sending them love. And so this is a way to include my dad and my love for him on my burial shroud, even though he's no longer here. And one of the things that I've Attached to my burial shroud so far, just basically attached. This is the, the back of the shroud, and I don't know if you can actually, how well you can see this. Um, there's a couple of hands here. These are my husband's hands. I asked, <clears throat> I asked David to place his hands on a piece of linen for me, and I've traced them so that I have his hands with me when I go to the ground. And so I have placed his hands on the back of the shroud where they will actually hold my head like this. And so I have him with me, holding me. Um, and I will also, because they're white linen, but I will also sew those, sew those on of my true love. Now, so, that's kind of the work that I've put onto the shroud so far. Um, and what I'm thinking about and what I'm encouraging you all to think about is, who do, you, who do you think will be tending to you when you die? Who's going to be looking after your body? Who's going to be arranging your final disposition, whether it's cremation, natural burial, conventional burial? Um, who are those people? And to me, it's really important that I address those people on my burial shroud so that while they're tending to my dead body, I am also sending them 
a very personal message, almost like a love letter, if you want to think of it like that. Um, what I what I find I'm I'm doing is I seem to be creating a lot of circles, and so I guess that'll be a theme on my burial shroud. This is a uh, how well you can see that in the light, but that's a sunflower. Now these leaves I. Um, I dyed myself with turmeric. Turmeric makes a beautiful yellow dye. I've not done a lot of that kind of thing, so it was really fun to do. And this, um, this sunflower, is, I've started to embroider the edges on, and then the whole piece will be embroidered onto the burial shroud. This is my sister, Laura, who's younger than me, and I fully expect her to be um, one of those people who's looking after me, um, should, should she outlive me, and I sure hope she does. Um, so this is for my sister, Laura. She loves sunflowers, and she is a sunflower, and she's an old soul. And so while I'm sewing this, I'm thinking of her and sending her love. And uh, yeah, that's my sister, Laura. Nicola, Yeah. I have a question. Sure. So when, when we're talking about green burials, the emphasis is on green and recyclable and, and things being reclaimed by the earth. So what is the limitation on materials? Like I understand what an organic fabric is, but what about using things like beads, glass yeah. beads or pieces of wood? Like what, where do you draw the line? Well, you can certainly, materials? you know, you could certainly use pieces of wood, I think it's fine. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I intend to include a stone with me because stones are really important to me. But I was inclined to, um, to add some buttons and thought, no, I don't want to put buttons in the ground. Well, you know, and then again, you could use wooden buttons, I guess, but the less, the less the earth has to chew up, the better, I think. And so certainly, you know, if you wanted to add some wood to your shroud, that would be fine you know you're likely there's nothing wrong with wood going into the ground and and possibly your shroud carrier is going to be wood as well and it can be placed in the ground it doesn't have to be but it can be and so yeah just mindful of of uh what the earth likes to eat <laughs> if that makes sense if it if it doesn't like it don't use it on your shroud does that answer your question it does thank you Thanks. yeah yeah and so, um, and then hands are also a theme in, in my shroud. Um, I don't know if any of you actually brought material to work on today, but what I wanted to suggest is that you trace your own hand um, and, and start working with that as a way to embellish your shroud. This is, this is one of those things I thought, oh my God, it's, it's terrible, I'm gonna chuck it. But no, I'm not gonna chuck it. It's going on my shroud because I made that promise. So this is a, um, this is my own hand that I traced and then I've started to paint it and I will also probably um, embellish it with embroidery but, and so these are old fir trees that are kind of coming growing out of my hand and that's a um, that's about my attachment to land my attachment to place and my love of this place that we've lived for 20 years and I don't expect we're going anywhere um, so really this is about my my attachment to place. And so that will also be going on the shroud. I have, um, I mentioned three of my family who died. I also just lost a, my older sister in late June. She died unexpectedly. It wasn't COVID, um, but it was, she's been ill for quite a while, but um, nobody expected her to die. And so it was a shock and we had been estranged for at least a decade, um, which made it a very complicated grief. Um, and so, you know, one, one of those things, right? Um, because I wasn't able to, because we were estranged and also it was during COVID, so there wasn't the possibility of, of traveling to her um, to look after her, although I would have done that in a heartbeat. Um, she ended up dying at home, her partner sent her to, you know, allowed her to go to the morgue, which is understandable. But then there was no contact from a uh, contact of my sister Catherine by another loving person. That was it. She went to the morgue. She was in the morgue for what I felt was way too long. 
There wasn't an autopsy done. It was just a timing thing. And then she went from there to a funeral director who I did manage to have um, establish a rapport with. So I was able to talk to him. Um, but it really, it really broke my heart that there was no family there to, to send her on her way. And, I, and that's happening so much these days um, that we are not able to be there. We can't touch, we can't love, we can't tend to. And so we're all looking for other ways that we can, um, other ways we can somehow touch, touch them, even though it's not physical touch. And so one of the ways is um, by writing, you know, writing a poem or writing a note. Um, what I did was I arranged for my sisters and nieces to write something and then I sent it to the funeral director and asked him, asked him to print it off and put it in with Catherine and also to please include a little bouquet of wild roses. And so that felt better than doing nothing. And so I really, I really feel that notes are important and touch is important. Um, Pia Interlandi, if you haven't watched her little video, she's, she's so lovely, she's so awesome. Anyway, she talks about handprints um, and, and a way to, you know, even if you do it on a piece of paper and send it to whoever's looking after a dead person, um, whether it's a funeral home or a family member, um, that that's a way to send your touch with them. Um, so that's, you know, that's one possibility. This is, and so my sister Kath, um, <clears throat> who is now also deceased and, and cremated, um, this was her, this was her very pretty little white shirt that I've worn for years, even though we haven't spoken. Um, and my family came up in August and we had a, a lovely ritual for Kath. Um, and I wore this at our gathering and now I won't wear it again. What I want to do is to, I'll cut it and I'm going to add a piece to my shroud as a, a way to love my sister um, on my shroud. And also I'll use pieces of this beautiful little shirt to um, make remembrances for my nieces and my other sister and family who were here for the, the gathering. And I'll make little pouches um, for a dead person remembrance. That's, that's what I'm doing with this. So how are we doing for time? Quarter to four, okay. So other, other things that I'm doing, I think it's, re it's really important to have pieces of, of the people we love. This is also my husband's. This is a piece of one of the very first shirts that I met him when I met him that he was wearing. And so this is going on my shroud because <clears throat> it's really, to me, it's David, right? And so I'll take that with me. Um, and then I have other little weird circle things here. This is another little dyed thing that I made that I will use for something on my shroud. Um, in my younger years, I used to collect doilies like a fiend. I'd go to flea markets and um, backyard sales and, and buy doilies. And, the thing that delights me about these is they are someone's work. They're some woman's tender, loving work. And I, I've always treasured them as, as a way of, of honoring that, of honoring that um, the unknown work of, of hands of our ancestors. And so one of those is going on my shroud. Um, I mentioned wanting to take a rock with me. I absolutely have to go with a rock. So this is the rock that I've chosen. It's a Fraser River rock from around here. And I would like it to be placed right here on my body because I love stone. Um, my husband and I here, here on the property have built a beautiful stone circle. I've not been to Scotland or Ireland or Wales. I haven't seen a real stone circle but I love them and they're very powerful places and we built one here on the property. Um, and yeah, I love stones, big and small. So this one, I want to go right here. I love the weight too. I, I like weighted blankets and this stone is a nice weight. And then pockets. Pockets are a really, really lovely idea for a shroud, right? Um, pockets, 
pockets are important to me to put on my shroud because I want the people I love to be able to send notes with me if they choose. And so here I have an old shirt with a pocket. This shirt belonged to my brother and then my mom wore it for years. And so it has a real emotional connection to both my brother and my mom. And so I will put this pocket on my shroud and with the idea of people who love me being able to send notes with me, what I will do prior to that is write my own notes and put them in here to the people I love, right? As a way that they can say, oh, look, there's a note for me. Because, because we die and we so often wish there'd been some last, some last word, some last note, some last loving thing from that person who's just died. So that's what I intend to do with these pockets. And I'll probably put quite a few of them on my shroud. And uh, I'll also make little remembrances to my pets who've gone before um, because they're a huge part of our lives and our grief. When my first dog died, we had the vet come to the house and administer the, the euthanasia. And I swear to God, as she died, I actually, I physically felt a piece of my heart leave my body. This was after my brother's suicide and my mom's death. It was an incredibly powerful um, love and grief. And, and I think anyone who has loved an animal and lost them understands that they're they're a huge part of our lives and so they will be also remembered on my shroud because hopefully i'll meet them in spirit right <laughs> and if not they'll just be remembered and so i also have a notebook um my shroud notebook this here is a drawing of this that I wear that belonged to my brother Michael that he wore always and that I wear now when I do something important like this workshop or when we go to town we don't leave here much um, we'd rather not so we don't <laughs> so when, when we go to town I take my brother my mom and dad and my brother and their ashes are in these rings they travel with me I really carry my dead loved ones with me in a very um, sacred and a very pointed way. Um, I don't forget to take them with me. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I do. I'm pretty tied to them. I also am one of those fortunate people, I think, who have had uh, very intense meetings um, with the people I love who have died after they're dead. Um, it was only a couple of years ago I was walking on my beautiful path around this property that David makes for me and I'd been to, to what I call Mike's Rock where I talked to him and I had taken this with me because it was it had just my sister just found it and given it to me and so I'd taken it with me because I wanted to take it off at the rock um, and I wanted to say, hey, Mike, I've got this now. Isn't that cool? Well, I totally forgot about it when I was at the stone. And as I'm walking on the path away from the stone, probably 20 feet in front of me, my mom, my dad, and my brother appeared as plain as day. And my, my mom was in the middle. And she said, Nick, we're always just as close as that pendant you wear. Well, they didn't say anything else, but they really didn't have to. And so you can imagine what this means to me. Um, and uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. And I feel very, very lucky to have had that encounter. So this, which um, dad and uh, we've always called the homestone Mike's pendant is the design of the pendant and that will be going on my shroud. I'll, I'll be sewing that on my shroud. Um, and yeah, I was talking, so I've got this notebook here where I just keep making little um, ideas. That's Kath's blouse. Um, pockets, 
and I was thinking some pockets with little pebbles in them, but then I decided I think I want that big honk and rock sitting on my chest, so I probably won't put pebbles and rocks. Um, and then uh, I might I might sew a labyrinth on on the, the shroud because finger labyrinths are really cool and it might be a neat way for people to grieve to have a a labyrinth they can follow on a shroud just an idea and then those are my little uh pet pockets there a little string of pet pockets <laughs> and that's my dad's guardian angel there it's actually an um okanagan indian pictograph um, that became his his guardian spirit and so that guy will go on my shroud and for my mom I'm putting a wishbone on she was an amazing woman one of one of the things she did that was so sweet was she always saved wishbones and she would dry them out and clean them up and paint them gold or silver and put them on our packages um, they weren't to break they were to hold your wish which I thought was so neat. It wasn't, it wasn't about pulling, pulling them and breaking them. Um, and so that's my mom, the whole wishes. And then, you know, there's other, lots of other people I love, which I will, who I will be including some way on my shroud. Um, I have my dear, um, my husband's wife, Jeannie Lee, who became my dearest friend. And, and she is still very much a part of my life. Um, she's from New Zealand, and she gave me a beautiful brooch, um, a carved Maori bone, and I will be putting that symbol on my on my shroud as well. Um, one of the things that's really, really important to me are my beloved's ashes, and. This was really interesting. I had kind of an epiphany one night as I'm lying in bed. And I'm thinking, you know what? I need to, I need to have some of their ashes with me when I'm buried or cremated. Um, I need them. I need them with me because I always have them with me, right? Like I say, I wear their, I wear ashes in their rings. I have their ashes. Um, I was telling my nieces when they visited about my dead people boxes. You know, I really keep my dead people close to me. <laughs> and um, one of the one of the things in, in my cabinet back here is full of dead dogs and dead people, <laughs> my beloveds. And so this box here was given to me by a friend years ago. Um, the, the two women went to Thailand and they brought this back for me. And so it, decades ago, I turned it into my mum's um, my mom's dead box, the treasure box. And so there's a beautiful little doll she gave me eons ago. It's got a, a crepe paper dress. Um, these are little Egyptian beads from my dad. Um, there's a little, little flower thingies there. These are all just memories and, and lovely things. And in these boxes, I keep their ashes. And so I have in here, there's also a bag of ashes, but I have this little bottle. This contains my mom, some of my mom's and dad's ashes. And so because I wanted to take some of them with me and, and saying I was lying in bed and kind of had this epiphany and, and I thought, well, if I take some of them with me, maybe I can let them go a little bit in this life. I sometimes feel like it's not like they weight me down, but I'm very entrenched in this, um, in my dead beloveds, right? I spend a lot of time with them. I, I think that's okay, but I also think it's okay to let them go. And so I had this idea, this is my hand here, my hand print, right? And I've sewn a little circle here. And what I'm going to do is, is put some of mom and dad's ashes in that little circle and sew it up. And so my hand will be holding them on my shroud. They're a little bit of, little bit of their ashes. And so I thought, yeah, and it actually feels really good. It feels like, yeah, well, if I can take them with me, maybe I can let them go a little bit in this life, right? So that's what I'm doing there. And then 
then, you know, there's all sorts of other material and ideas. Um, you know, I've got this scarf here that I've had for forever, it feels like. You know, I got it in Vancouver when I was young and doing theater and bought it on the, in the East End on Commercial Drive and it's been a part of my life for so long. And it's so threadbare and it's got big holes in it, but I want to take it with me because it's part of my past that I really love. And so some of this or all of this will also be going on the shrub. Okay. I want us to take about a five minute break, if that's okay. Um, I could use a good, good glass of water um, or a couple minutes break. We don't have to go anywhere, but if you'd like to get up or move around for a minute and we'll regroup in, a, in three or four minutes. How's that sound? Good. Okay, back in a second. I don't know if that was three or four minutes, it probably wasn't. So we'll hang out for a minute and see if people are away and coming back. What can I do with my glasses? They're there. Nicole, I don't know if you can see this, it's Paula. Uh, my little doily, can you see the doily? I can't tell. Just a sec, I just need to oh, change, sure. change my view here and find you. Paula, hi. Yeah, hi. Oh, I'm trying to get you to see the doily, but uh, you see it? Yes. Yeah, I love them too. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you going to add one yeah. to your shroud? <laughs> you know, we could make, oh, yes. make a shroud out of doilies too. That would be pretty cool. Be fairly fragile. I made. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. I made lanterns for my daughter's wedding out of uh, all doilies. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah, I love them. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. So I would really, you know, we're at the four o'clock mark. I'd really like to see and, and hear from folks. I know that some of you have been working on your shrouds. You have ideas. Um, one of the things, like I mentioned earlier, is what I would 
like you to do if you haven't started and you brought your piece of cloth, um, that you do a handprint and start there. If, if you haven't started and if you're finding it hard to start, that that's a really good place to start. Um, it's with your own hand, your own heart, right? So once we're all back here, let's, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear and see what some of you are doing or, or and questions you have that I might be able to help with. I think I've pretty much roared through my, um, kind of what I'm doing and my ideas. So I wanna hear yours. And so you have control of your mute and unmute and um, I'll just let folks kind of come and go as you please. How's that sound? Hi, Nicola. I have a few questions about- well, I find um, all of the Oh, go ahead, Karen. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that you were using turmeric to dye some of the material. Uh, do you just mix that with water? And because I, I want to use um, natural dyes as well. I was thinking blueberries, beets, yeah, and yeah. sort of making, I, I want to tie dye yes, um, my shroud and then embellish on top of it. Yes. But I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, with using the natural um, materials, like the berries and the the turmeric, do you have to, do you just add them to water, or do you have to add anything to yeah, kind of make sure that they don't fade? Well, there's, I'm I'm certainly no expert, and I just played around with some. I had a bunch of pots on the wood stove, and I tried a whole bunch of different things. I used some leaves. I used blueberries. I used turmeric in one. Turmeric was the one that was just came so vibrantly yellow and I loved it. The other ones ended up be, just being kind of black, right? I didn't get a lot of kind of vibrant color, but like I say, I'm not an expert. And there are wonderful websites online about natural dyeing that I would encourage you to, to search and, and use. I don't have links um, at, at the ready here, but they're pretty easy to find. And of course you want to use natural dyes. Um, if you're doing a natural burial, you know, you want, the, some of the things that I've seen are just beautiful, like the, the eco prints with prints of um, leaves and, and things on cloth, they're so pretty. Um, so that's something that I might explore again too, is the, the eco, um, eco prints, right? Because then you can embellish those and they're just beautiful. So yeah, go for it. Let me know how it goes, Karen. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thanks, <laughs> will do. Yeah. So I think that I'll probably make natural dyes and um, make handprints of the people that I love that I can then cut out and apply to a shroud. Uh, one of the things that I find um, um, quite challenging as I listen to all these wonderful thoughts and ideas and see them is that I live in a province where we don't have green burials and home funerals are not really um, permitted yeah. as far as I know. Yeah. And um, which doesn't mean that a shroud cannot be prepared for someone uh, but it does mean that there are rather strict limitations at the moment anyway on how one can conduct um, a personal funeral right. what and burial. What province are you in, Gail? I'm in Quebec. Right, yeah, Quebec's pretty tough. And Oh, I think as far as, you know, my research and my participation in different groups is concerned, I think pr Quebec is probably the least um, advanced uh, or the least open to alternative possibilities. Yes. And um, so that's really a challenge, but it doesn't mean 
that I haven't spoken with people that I love about what I would like. And also we'll go to an even um, more developed, you know, uh, uh, experience of, you know, purchasing techni ice or different things that can allow me some of the things that I would like uh, when I do pass. And, um, but at the end of the day, I don't know what's gonna be uh, possible, you know, to, yeah. Yeah. to do. Uh, yes, we can only make our wishes known. I mean, well, so I if anybody knows us, we don't, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And even though I've prepared a burial shroud, maybe I'll die in a plane accident, you know, in another country. And, and so all of this is kind of a moot point. Um, I also wonder, you know, if someone I love dies before me and in a sudden way, if I might use this shroud for them instead of for me. Um, so, you know, there's, we do what we can and, and it's, a, it's a, a grieving process and a process of like Gail for you, um, with the handprints of the people who love you, it's a way for you to let them know that you love them and, and that you want them to, to be, to participate. And we can only oh, do sure. as much as we can do, right? We don't know exactly how we're gonna die, where we're gonna die, what Correct. the circumstances are gonna be, so yeah. And I'm not likely to die in a plane because I don't travel. Well, it's <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's traveling too far these days. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. See, some people are leaving us. I know that we've got some folks that, where it's very late at night. So if you are leaving, pop in and say goodbye before you go. Well, I would just like to say so much thank you for, um, you know, being able to um, to be here uh, with you and with who is here and be able to um, witness somebody who is doing what I believe in, love and, you know, um, have uh, similar uh, tendencies towards. Mm -hmm. So just even having, you know, the experience of that relationship to somebody else who has a kindred you know, um, uh, a spirit towards uh, being able to live their death. Uh, yeah. I thank you. And thank, thank you to you. everybody else who has an interest. Yes, thank you all. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So who else has, has started work on a shroud or, a, um, or any piece of a shroud? I know that Lexi has is actually making her own shroud. Are you still here, Lexi? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm making my own shroud. Uh, my sewing machine was not behaving itself, so I packed it in half a <laughs> day and decided that the machine needs to go for a service. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm making it. And honestly, like the cost difference, I've got beautiful linen that I got from Fabricland. And I think I'm paying... All in all, I think I paid $40, which is, is huge. So, I mean, and I'm not a seamstress. I'm not, I own a sewing machine, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not that crafty and, and it's fairly straightforward. Um, I'm taking photos all the way through. So my right. hope is that like right. I can show other people because um, the, the instructions we get aren't that great. No, they're not. I'm uh, that. Oh yes, they're, it would be they're very, very valuable vague. for they you to really valuable. Well, they don't tell you how much. They don't tell you how much fabric you actually need. They don't tell you, you know, where to put the ties, which parts, or to, which part to put where, or that's right. so. I'm I'm taking a photo a photo documentary of one of the designs that I thought was the most practical. Great. And, um, so hopefully. And it has the side straps and it also has the ties. So I don't know how strong it'll all be. That's my only concern. See, and I don't think it has to be particularly strong because you're going to need yeah. some, something to carry, right? Yeah. And so my, my thought was 
it's not necessarily to really be carrying my body with, but just maybe to position it. That's right. And yeah. then tuck them underneath. Yeah. But I'd like to embroider on each one of the handles, um, like who I would hopefully, who would hopefully be holding one of them. And I'd like to do their names. Beautiful. I mean, yeah. It, I don't know what will happen, but um, there has been a lot of interest because um, I do uh, death cafes and there has been a huge amount of interest in burial shrouds um, from a lot of people and they're like tongue in cheek wanting to call it a bitch and stitch. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm really happy to be able to kind of come here and get some ideas that I can take back to the group and say, Great. Hey, like, this is what Great. I learned. What do you think? You know, um, because even people who maybe necessarily don't subscribe to a particular religion want a spiritual burial. Yeah. And so I do a lot of that negotiation with them on what that looks like. So wonderful. It's a really, really Thank cool you. place to be. Thank you. Kim. Um, I, I'm fortunate enough to say that I have a burial shroud. Um, when I was eight years old, my grandmother crocheted me a king size um, crocheted Afghan, a granny, scare, a granny square Afghan. Yeah. And um, in the top corner, it has my full name, my birth date, the date of the Christmas, 1984. Oh, beautiful. And um, I've carried it with me ever since. It is what I'll be buried in. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, family and friends can, we can find some sort of maybe fun video like the project to do, or even the lid of the, the, the bottom, as you said, if I yeah. get the cremation yeah. tray and then decorating the lid, but I feel very, very fortunate to have this beautiful. That's a wonderful. Handmade item. Yeah. What a treasure. So I, I have a 96 year old mom-in-law, David's, David's mom. She still lives on her own. Um, She's a gardener, she writes, she blogs, she's still online, um, and she is a master weaver. Um, and when I started talking about my shroud and wanting to do this workshop, she said, you know, Nick, I'm, I kind of thought about weaving my own shroud, but I'm hesitant to let that beautiful piece of weaving go with me to the grave. So <laughs> I wish she would, and, and perhaps when she passes, we will, um, at least tentatively wrap her in her beautiful weaving. Um, maybe not send it to the grave with her, but as a way of honoring her beautiful work, the work of her hands. So that's that's so cool, Kim, that you have that. Yeah. My mom is also a weaver and she's had that idea too. So hopefully she does that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just quickly wanted to share, I had an idea today before this workshop, I have this piece of, kind of fabric with little yeah. design already on it. Yeah. And um, I thought of doing embroidering a flower where my eyes are so that it could be laid over oh, my nice. face. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know cool. how that would work into to a shroud yet, but I thought it was a fun idea. Well, it can be wrapped. It can be wrapped. It doesn't, wouldn't need to be attached to the shroud. It could be a scarf mm -hmm. that's wrapped around your head, right? That's a really neat mm -hmm. idea. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, Nicola, I have a, a kind of an odd question. There's <laughs> no um, odd kind of a question. practical question. <laughs> um, I know you made a comment about, um, like you wanted the flannel against you, and you, I think you made a comment about not wanting to be dressed, which I love that idea. Like, my mother-in-law passed in the last year, and I remember when I went and saw her in her coffin, I was like, wow, she looks so uncomfortable, all yeah. dressed up, you know, with all the makeup and the suit, and just, oh, it just like, seemed so rigid and the opposite of, like, relaxed and comfortable. Um, but at the same time, like, if the family is doing things, and they're there, and they're shrouding you, like, how does the whole thing of not being clothed work? Because, like, not everyone is going to want to see and then not like me or whoever, like it, you know, in all my glory, I don't know if I want to be seen that way. And so I'm just curious, like, so and like there, when my um, father died a few people? years ago, like, are there, Sherry, are there maybe, I'm one, sorry, are there one or two people, Sherry, that you would be comfortable with tending to your 
naked dead body um <laughs> you, know. you know i think if they're i think if they're comfortable then i'm comfortable with it but the idea of like like for example like is my son going to be comfortable with that or Probably not um yeah and yeah. so and so when we when we die if we're fortunate enough to um i would say have a home funeral or um or to be tended to at home there are going to be a a couple of people who will actually tend to the body like with my dad you know the the mm -hmm. men weren't in the room when we washed him um but mm -hmm. he, it depends on who the person is and and the relationship mm -hmm. and so you know you might have one or two or three people who are actually tending to washing and initially mm -hmm. wrapping you so that you can be naked um yeah okay. you know, and so it's a matter of like you say, if there are people who are willing to do that, you can bet there's going to be one or two, you know, and that's all it right. takes to yeah. do the washing and the yeah. wrapping. And then other people yeah, can. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like I was remembering um, when my dad died a few years ago, like the, he lived in Seattle and my family there, like that was really one of the first deaths in their immediate family. And the whole family just really struggled with it. Where as I had been through my mom's and a lot of other family members. So. Yeah. Even though I wasn't a doula then, I sort of became the family's doula because I, I just been through it so many times. Um, so I explained to them, like you know, that I was gonna I was gonna go to the cremation and I was gonna light the the retort. Yeah. Um, and then um, and when he passed in the middle of the night, like the um, hospice nurses wanted to call the funeral home right away, and I just said no, no. I said we'll call them when we're ready. That's right. Um, and fortunately, the family was okay with letting me kind of take over at that point. And so what, so when the funeral home did come, like I told them, I said, I'm staying and I'm helping. And so I did get to help wash and, and um, like put his body in the body bag and everything. But again, it was like, I was comfortable with that. That's and right. the family there was just like, can't, we can't believe you did all that. And I just said, well, it, comes over time like the very first time I lost someone dear to me I didn't like I was like please take this and take care of it so it's ready yeah. to it's a growth it's a journey of growth you know to reach the point That's where you right. can do that yeah yeah and you know the the family members who who joined you on that journey will be more comfortable next time most likely yeah and that's, yeah, community, exactly. that's community death caring it's sharing our knowledge yeah. with each other in in community and in family and yeah. For those who don't have that kind of family or community, there are death doulas, and that's what they do, um, and home funeral guides who will come in and assist a family um, to do what they're comfortable with, you know, so those, there are those supports available, but you're doing just the right thing, Sherry, you know, and sharing that with, with your family yeah. uh, so that yeah. they can and become more comfortable. And hopefully by the yeah, time I encourage all of us that you just you do whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. When yeah. they heard that I wanted to go to the, the cremation and actually like their retort, they were they, they were just like horrified. And, uh, and and I just felt like with my other parents, like I felt really empty afterwards that I hadn't done it, you know. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, yeah. I did want to share. I did I did uh outline my hand and I started embroidering it. Oh wonderful. And I love it. <laughs> good <laughs> and i'm picturing you know like getting my husband's handprint and my son's handprint and um yeah i'm already in love with it <laughs> good excellent so speaking of lighting lighting a retort um david my husband and i did a um a cremation of a, a, um, a community member's cat this summer on our property um because she didn't want to send him off to the crematory the pet cremation place and she wanted to be more hands-on. Um, and so she brought her, her cat out here to see. She kept him at home in the freezer for a few days, brought him out here. David had set up a small wood um, heater in the middle of our stone circle. And we used briquettes and wood. And we did the beautiful ceremony with the young lady and her cat. Um, she laid a shroud in the grass and put her cat on the shroud and laid flowers and herbs and sweet smelling things on her kitty and then wrapped wrapped the cat and handed him over to David and David placed him in the fire and we were able to sit there the three of us in the stone circle while her cat was cremated and it was absolutely beautiful um yeah and then she got the ashes back a couple of weeks later and she was so pleased with the whole process it was really quite a 
um, a wonderful experience and we would do it again. Anybody else have shroud things to share? I have one embroidery piece that I'm working on that will eventually go on my shroud that I can share. All right. So oh, it's a goat in a coat. That's beautiful. Nice work. And it's all made with tiny little French knots. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Painstaking. Oh, love. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that it'll be finished by the time I die because oh, I've been well. working on that for like three years. Yeah. <laughs> it may be a work in progress. <laughs> you know, but yeah, no. Um, if I get it done, it'll hang in my house for a while and then yeah. eventually detach to my shroud, hopefully. So <laughs> share. I'm gonna try and share some photographs here that I have on my iPad. I'm gonna do this share screen thing. Um, I'm still here. We're all still here. What am I supposed to do? Tap screen mirroring. Where? <laughs> you can go ahead and talk while I'm doing this. If you. Oh, darn, I practiced this, but I'm not getting it now. No, it's not working, that's okay. I'll just bugger off your stop share. Um, we have some pictures of, of beautiful shrouds and I don't know if you're not familiar with Esmeralda Kent of Kin, Kin Carol um, Shroud, she has beautiful shrouds that she makes. And um, there are people who are real, you know, they've been doing this for decades, like um, Dina Stander of Last Dance Shrouds in the States. Um, she's someone who will work with people who are doing DIY shrouds. Um, she's quite happy to kind of pitch in and help folks. And she also sells beautiful shrouds. Um, and, and Pia Interlandia, who, you know, I say her name and I just light up because I just, I'm in love with her. She just does beautiful work. So if you're not familiar with her, do check her out. And she's got some really neat little videos about some of the work she does with her. Um, With your shrouds. Who was okay. the first first person who uh, said Nicola? The okay. Esmeralda. Esmeralda Kent from Kin Kincaro Kincaro Shrouds. And I don't th I don't think I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's on that work the the notes the workshop notes that I sent out. You'll find those links on that. Oh. Yeah, that document. was a great addition. Thank you, Nicola. You're so welcome. My pleasure. I am, I have recorded this meeting. Is there anyone who's, um, who would be adverse to me sharing? Or would I be all right to share? And please speak up if you, if you would be. Everybody okay with that? Oh, thanks, Teresa, there's the link. All right, I'll post it. Uh, I'll, I'll post it on the um, natural burial Caribou Natural Burial Sanctuary website. And we're pretty excited about the fact that we've decided to do our burial sanctuary here on our own property. Um, I've been kind of going, mm, do I want to be cremated? Do I want to be buried? Well, if I can be buried on my own property, it's a no brainer. Um, I, and, and it looks like it's going to happen, so. Okay, Lexi's got starving family, she's out of here. Yeah, we're just closing up into 4.30. So I just wanna say again, thank you so much for coming. I'm just so honored that you all spent this time here this afternoon. Um, 
it's been truly wonderful for me and I hope that you've got some good ideas and uh, and I love you all thank you <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing the knowledge this afternoon. Thank, Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thank everyone. You Thank you so much, much Nicola. Nicola. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Leaving so Bye. inspired. Good. Yes. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. Be well. Have a wonderful evening or morning, as the case may be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cheerio, much love.